a time when things are shifting. We're gonna, there can be a new world order out there. And we've got to lead it. The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. What's going on, everybody? This is End Time Headlines, and it is Sunday night, August 28th. And we typically don't broadcast on a Sunday and typically not on a Sunday night. Uh, But we told you guys that we are changing things up. Our ministry is changing things on how we do things. And one of the things we want to do is we want to do more short snippets like we're doing tonight. So we're going to get straight to the point. Again, we welcome you to the broadcast. Again, I'm Ricky Scaparo, the founder, the pastor, and the voice of End Time Headlines. And this is a special breaking news alert that I want to bring you tonight. Um, This is an article that just came over on our main website. So we want to share you, we want to give you this headline. Uh, if we'll, if you'll give us about 10 or 15 minutes of your time, this is all we're going to take tonight. So don't forget to share this, uh, get this broadcast out, invite people to the broadcast. Is Mount St. Helens recharging? This Again, this is breaking news. More than 88 earthquakes have rocked this dormant volcano in the past 30 days. Again, if you're just tuning in, Breaking news, Mount St. Helens, uh, it could be recharging or reawakening. More than 88 earthquakes have rocked the volcano in the past 30 days. We want to give you this report. Again, this is breaking news coming out of some sources that we put up on our main website, End Time Headlines. According to PNSN, uh, this is a channel that keeps up with these kind of things. There has been at least 38, 88 earthquakes that have rattled Mount St. Helens in the past 30 days. And if you're tuning in, you say, well, is that a big deal? Actually, it is. According to this website, the average amount of earthquakes, not during eruptions or precursors, are typically around 17 earthquakes per month at this volcano. <clears throat> Let me say that again. On average, 17 earthquakes a month at Mount St. Helens. On average, right now, there has been at least 88. That is a lot of earthquakes, God. That's way above average. That is reported, again, at Mount St. Helens. These quakes are related to stresses that are generally produced by magma recharge into the main crustal magma system. Um, And again, just... FYI, this is interesting to me, at least, uh, that this report also comes on the heels of a recent report that we did, uh, what, last week. Uh, There was a warning that came out by scientists warning that humanity is unprepared for a major catastrophic earth-changing volcanic eruption, uh, how be it? One from like uh, an earthquake, like a super volcano from where we'd see in Wyoming uh, there with the super volcano. And they're saying that there's a one in six chance of this type of world altering volcanic eruption that could take place in the next 100 years or in this century. And again, humanity is unprepared. And we're and here we are. And I'm not saying that this is going to happen. And I'm not saying that Mount St. Helens is going to erupt. But again, again, 88 earthquakes in the past 30 days. Typically, it's 17 earthquakes on an average there at that volcano. Now, if you're tuning in and you don't know much about this, uh, at Mount St. Helens, on May 18th, 1980, again, there may be many of you viewers that are watching this broadcast that uh, you will remember this, a magnitude 
five plus earthquakes was accompanied by a debris avalanche, which in turn unloaded the confining pressure at the top of, of this volcano by removing the crypto dome. This abrupt pressure released allowed hot water into the system to flash steam, which expanded explosively, initiating a hydrothermal blast directed laterally through the landslide scar. Again, a landslide scar. Because the upper portion of the volcano was removed, the pressure decreased on the system of magna beneath the volcano and a wave of decreasing pressure down the volcanic conduit to the surface or to the subsurface magna reservoir, which then began to rise, forming bubbles and, er and erupt explosively, driving a nine hour long eruption. On the 16th of March of 1980, before that eruption, two days later on the 18th, the first sign of activity at Mount St. Helens occurred as a series of small earthquakes on March 27th. After hundreds of additional earthquakes, the volcano produced its first eruption in over 100 years. Hmm, that's interesting. Again, when we go back and look, literally last week, they said that humanity will see this type of eruption that could alter. We're talking about a catastrophic eruption. And this, uh, this volcano is capable of producing a lot of damage. In fact, steam explosions blasted a 60 to uh, or 200 to 250 feet wide crater through the volcano summit ice cap and covered the snow clad southeast sector with dark ash. Within a week, the crater had grown to over 1300 feet. Now, again, this is before the eruption. And two giant crack systems crossed the entire summit area. Eruptions occurred on average from about one per hour in March to about one per day on April 22nd when the first period of activity ceased. Again, small eruptions resumed on the 7th of May and continued on May 17th. By that time, more than 10,000 earthquakes shaken the volcano and the north flank had grown outward of over 450, to, uh, 450 feet to form a prominent bulge. Again, all this took place before, again, the, the eruption of May 18th, 1980. There is videos, you can go on YouTube, you can go all over the place and you can see the catastrophic damage that took place of that. And they're scarring there uh, all over the place where this earthquake took place. So again, uh, this is something at least that I would say pay close attention to. Now, biblically speaking, and then we're gonna close. Biblically speaking, I'm gonna share this with you. Uh, volcanoes. Again, we did a whole segment on this last week on our podcast. You can go watch it. It's in more detail. But one of the verses that come to my mind, and this is where we'll close, Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 31. The prophet Joel tells us that uh, initiating in Acts chapter 2, there would be this outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was it began on Acts chapter 2. Peter stands up and says, this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. And he says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He talks about sons and daughters of prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. And all my men servants and maid servants, he's going to pour out his spirit in those days. Now listen to this, this next verse. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. This absolutely can, I'm not saying it's the main uh, description here, or it is absolutely a volcanic eruption, but I believe that most people would agree that blood, fire, and pillars of smoke could actually indicate that volcanic eruptions will occur in the last days. And notice it says the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood. Consequently, when you have an eruption like what we saw in Mount St. Helens in 1980, the volcanic ash that went up way up into the atmosphere, it li literally darkened out the sun and at night the blood 
appear to be as, or the moon, excuse me, appear to be as blood because of the volcanic ash that came up. And Joel said that this would occur before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So again, endtimeheadlinesguys.org, endtimeheadlines.com. That's going to be our main website. That's where you can find us. That's where you can subscribe to us. Please, again, don't forget to share this. Um, really a quick video today showing you uh, uh, an event that's taking place. We're going to keep our eyes on it, see what develops, see if there's more earthquakes that continue. So you guys that are living in that region where Mount St. Helens is located, you need to be paying attention to what's going on there. Again, if you'd like to know more information like this, you'd love to have these kind of updates, you can keep up with this by getting our free app. It's available on Apple, it's available on Android. Again, don't forget to download that today. If you're listening by podcast, listen by Spotify, you can download a free app. It's absolutely free. And you can push yes to push notifications, be notified of every headline and every podcast that comes across to your uh, inbox. And again, as always, um, we want to encourage you to subscribe to uh, guys. We're on Rumble, we're on Telegram, we're on. We are on Facebook. We don't know how long we'll be on there, but we're going to stay on there as long as we can. But listen, we're going to sign off for tonight. We know it's late; it's Sunday night, but we will be on here tomorrow, and we're going to do a full teaching. We have officially entered into the season of Test Shabal, the forty days of repentance. So we're going to come back on tomorrow. We're going to do a teaching there. And I'm not saying that we may we may come back a couple times tomorrow or through the, we're going to change things up a little bit when we have breaking news alerts we're going to take time to give those to you as they come in um, so I hope you like the changes uh, that we're making to the ministry and to how we deliver the news to you so we love you guys God bless you we'll see you tomorrow thank you for listening to the end time headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.